In terms of COVID itself, uh, so far the official uh, case count in Syria is very low. It's uh, 64. And there is, of course, uh, a great relief uh, that the numbers are not a lot worse when it comes to Syria. But at the same time, and this is also what I'm hearing from Syrians when I'm talking to them, there is, of course, a risk of a virus spread that is ever present. So there is no cause for complacency. There is a, a relative calm in Idlib, uh, the ceasefire that uh, Turkey and Russia entered into in the beginning of March is still uh, by and large uh, holding. Uh, and um, I, I've said that uh, this is indeed good news, uh, but I've also warned that hostilities could resume and that that would have devastating consequences, of course, not only in Idlib, uh, but in many other parts of Syria as, as well. So obviously very important that uh, the US and Russia continue to work together as I said, they've done it before with success. Uh, without the US-Russia cooperation, we would never have had Security Council Resolution 2254. Uh, and uh, so my appeal is for them is to strengthen that cooperation and to move on and to support uh, the, the process. As soon as uh, the pandemic situation allows, uh, they have agreed to come to Geneva. And as I said, they have agreed on an agenda for the next uh, meeting. I have stressed again and again that the time has now come for more meaningful actions on all of these issues. You know, as I said, on uh, detainees, abductees, and indeed also on missing persons.